God, one more time, oh God. God, we ask you to bless, oh God, the service, oh God. Bless the man of God that bring forth your word, God. Bless the choir, oh God, that they may sing to the glory and honor you, oh God. Oh God, we ask you to heal, deliver, and set free on this morning, oh God. Have your way, oh God, in this service, oh God, and we give you all glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We do thank God, praise God for being here on today. Amen. How many came in to magnify the Lord? Amen. To bless his name on this morning. Amen. We do thank God, praise God for being here on today. Amen. We're going to open up with a song from our choir. Amen. It will be I surrender all from um, 391. Amen. We will sing verses 1 and 3. Amen. And then after the song from the choir, we're going to hear our scripture and our prayer from our brother and sister Johnson. Amen. 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 for my husband, my pastor, my first lady, and everyone in their respectful order. I will be reading from Matthew 5th chapter, starting at the third, board, third verse. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for yes. they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Yes. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Yes. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I have read Matthew 5th chapter, verses 3 through 8. May God add a blessing to the reading of the word. Amen. Let every heart pray. Oh, most gracious and all wise and eternal God, we come before you one more time, O oh God. O oh God, we come before you in your son Jesus' name, O oh God. 
Oh God, we come before you just to tell you thank you, Lord. God, we thank you, God, for this day, oh Heavenly Father God. We thank you for last night, rest, oh God. Early rising this morning, oh Heavenly Father God. God, we had that tear to our limbs, oh Heavenly Father God. The sight of our eyes, oh Heavenly Father God. The end of our ears, oh God. And we know it's doing by your blood, your power, oh Heavenly Father God. God, that we are here today, oh God. And while we had the chance, God, while we had the opportunity, oh God, we want to tell you thank you, Lord. God, we bless you for who you are, oh Heavenly Father God. For all that you have done and all that you continue to do in our lives, oh Heavenly Father God. God, we don't need no rocks to cry for us, oh Heavenly Father God. Oh, for God, we have a voice, oh God. We can be the Lord for ourselves, oh God. And God, while we have the chance, oh God, we want to bless your holy name, oh God. We ask you to have your holy divine way in this place, oh God. And we also got you to have your way, God, to touch hearts and minds, oh God. God, look down upon the bow down here, oh God. Look down upon the confused mind, oh Heavenly Father God. Look down upon the wayward heart, oh Heavenly Father God. God, for there's life in your word, oh Heavenly Father God. There's healing in your word, oh God. There's deliverance in your word, oh God. There's anointing in your word, oh God. There's power in your word, oh God. God, for your word is living, oh Heavenly Father God. And God, it helps us, Heavenly Father God, God, to live a better Christian life. We want to thank you for your word, oh God. And God, we pray that you look down upon a man of God. Let him down in the storehouse of your wisdom and of your knowledge, oh God. That we continue to rightly derive the word of truth, oh God. Now bless them with the word from Ohio, oh God. A God, a word that will bless your heart, to bless your people's heart, oh God. A word that will look down upon your people, God, and change our wicked ways, oh God. A word that God will reclaim the backslide, oh God. A word, Heavenly Father God, that will transform our lives, oh God. God, bless them like only you can, oh God. God, let teaching and preaching be easy for you today, oh God. God, let them down in your mantle, oh Heavenly Father God. God, just for a little while, oh God. God, that He will bring clarity to our lives, oh God. God, that He will bring our Direction to our lives, oh God, that He will keep us on that straight and narrow path, oh God. God, use Him like only You can, oh God. God, God bless Him, Heavenly Father God, from the crown of His head down to the sole of His feet, oh God. God, look down upon the congregation, oh God. Help us to receive Your Word, oh God. God, help us to self examine ourselves, oh God. God, let Your Word be a mirror, Heavenly Father God. Oh God, you help, help us to right the wrongs in our life, oh God. And God, we pray, God, just have Your holy divine will, God. Continue to look down upon Your people, God. In a dark and evil, confused world, oh Heavenly Father God, You're still worthy. Of Heavenly Father God. You still deserve all the praise, oh God, and you still deserve all the honor, oh God. For the word teaches the Heavenly Father God, oh God, that when we enter to your gates, oh God, to make a joyful noise, oh God. The word teaches the Heavenly Father God, oh God, that we should be like that tree planted by the rivers of water, oh God. The word teaches the Heavenly Father God that you are our help, oh God. You are our source, oh God. You are our redeemer, oh Heavenly Father God. God, you're the forgiver of our sins, oh Heavenly Father God. God, you're the light of the world, oh Heavenly Father God. There's no darkness in you, oh Heavenly Father God. And God, pray, oh God, that you continue, oh Heavenly Father God, not just to bless us, Heavenly Father. God, that we'll be a reflection of you, O oh God. God, let us die daily to our way, our wicked ways, O oh God, and never receive more of you, O oh God. Bless you on today, O oh God. We honor you on today, O oh God. We thank you, God, for all things, O oh God. We thank you for your love, O oh God. We thank you for your kindness, O oh God. We thank you for your grace, O oh God. We thank you for your mercy, O oh God. Oh God, we commend the service into your hands, O oh God. Have your holy divine will, O oh God. Let your Holy Spirit fall upon the Son, Father God. Let us saturate this place. God, we thank you for all things, O oh God. And if I fail to ask anything, O oh God, God, you know my heart, O Heavenly Father God. Grant it to us if it be your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. to all I needed to touch from you. Amen. Praise God. I was listening as he was saying in his prayer. He said, I would not let the rock cry out for me. So how many are going to let the rock cry out for you on this morning? Amen. Amen. How many are going to let the rock cry out for you on this morning? Amen. Praise man. Praise God. How many are going to give him the praise and the glory on this morning? Amen. Here, amen. Teenage 
it's in my spirit, praise God, that song saying, I do worship him, amen. I worship him, praise God, because I love him, amen. He's so faithful to us, amen. And I say I love him on this morning, amen. So he's worthy of the praise, amen. He's worthy of the honor on this morning, amen. And I do thank God, praise God, for just being here one more time, amen. And I do thank God, praise God, for the man of God that's going to bring forth the word of God. Amen. Praise God. Knowing that he got a word in his belly. Amen. Knowing he got a word for us. Amen. And as I always say, open up your ears. Amen. Open up your heart. Praise God. Open up your spirit. Praise God. To hear what that say the Lord on this morning. Amen. Because God got a word just for you on this morning. Praise God. No matter what your situation is on this morning. No matter what you're facing on this morning. No matter what you're going through. God got a word just for you, praise God. And after you hear a Bible selection from the choir, you hear no other than our own Pastor Gregory Black on this morning. We're going to sing choir and preach Pastor Black. Preach
most gracious and all wise and eternal God we come again this morning, Father, to tell you thank you. Thank you, Father, for our last night rest and early rising this morning. Thank you for life and health and strength and your love and your kind, your grace and your mercy. Realizing, God, that you've been good to us and not only been good, but God, you still is good. And so, Father, we pray now, hide us from the cross and let none really see me but hear your word. Father, let us down into the storehouse of your knowledge and of your wisdom and of your understanding. Father, we pray now, God, help us to write the divine the word of truth. God, that it will touch heart, that it will touch mind. Father, that somebody will cry out. Father, that somebody will call and somebody will text. Father, that it want to be saved. So, Father, we take this service out of our hand. And God, we'll put it in your hand. Have your holy divine word. Father, we pray for a distraction. We pray for a Father, that your word will be manifest. We ask deep blessing, all other blessing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the precious Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. If you agree with that, give God your best. Word.
but it's just a matter of time. That's right. Let me say it again. We may live a long time, but it's just a matter of time for all of us to click out of here. Amen. Whether we be here where God calls us home, or either we have the church be wrapped, you still going to leave. You still going to get out of here. Amen. So we might as well prepare. Uh, I'm going to bring this out one night in Bible study. Not today. I'm going to bring it out one night in Bible study how uh, people, Bible, uh, Solomon talks about how you know, a man can have so much when he dies. Mm -hmm. He falls in another yeah. person's hand. Yes, uh -huh. And you think about when you work all your life being a lesson. I mean, just work hard and yeah. never got a chance to enjoy whatever. And it falls into somebody else's hand. I, I didn't say your children. Why? I didn't say fall in somebody else's hand. And you work hard. Amen. Right. Would never go nowhere. But when it fell in their hand, they go everywhere. <laughs> oh, so you got to look at it. Oh, yeah. uh, man need to enjoy his labor. Why, why are you here? I don't say blow and throw away, but enjoy some stuff that you, while you going through. Y'all better hear what I'm saying, man. I mean, you know, now I'm not, man, what, what I'm trying to say is, uh, you might say, well, I don't want to pay uh, $15 for one app. Well, you may not want to pay $15 or whatever, but you don't have to buy a whole bushel, but you eat one. <laughs> you, you, you eat one. Hey, Amen. You eat one. Hey, Amen. So we need it. We need it. Lord God don't, don't want us to just work, 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 and never enjoy our labor. We're going we to work on that uh, one Bible study tonight. Amen. I'm going to show you this trip to highway. You know, sometimes a man put stuff in his pocket, got holes in his pocket. You know, you put money stuff in your pocket, they run right through, you know. And sometimes people say, well, I can't never catch up. You got to give God some of your time so you can catch up. Amen. Oh, okay. So you're you going to leave. I told you yesterday, somebody else going to drive that car now. Somebody else going to sleep in that bedroom set that you got when you're so funny. Of. That combo that you don't want them children nobody to play on somebody's dog. And you don't work hard in your life. <laughs> that, that, that child, that, that child club, you have all that fine child in, and you don't want nobody else to bother that child when you leave here. Everybody will drink from that child and eat from that child. All right, let's go to our table. I thought maybe I just let you have that. Amen. But one pastor, one pastor was stripped. Amen. Amen. You know, I can hear children that for mom and dad. They say me and say, but I'm going to enjoy myself. Amen. These dollars that sometimes we go to, but I'm not going to pay $50, $60 for no dollar. These children, they'll take your money and pay $125. Amen. Boy, ain't look back at Amen. Let, let us go to our, our word of God. Amen. Somebody already think about what I said. So we have to look at it like that. You walk around and your shoes run all over. You walk around with holes in your pants. And soon you till over before you die. They all talk about what belongs to them. Amen. From our text today. Amen. Amen. I think about all this stuff now. I think about it now. Amen. Amen. From John chapter 6, very familiar scripture. Amen. Verses 51 down to 66. Oh, so that's a long way, but somebody had read 50. John chapter 6, beginning at verse 53, and we'll read down to verse 66. This is where we read. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye shall have no life in you. Whosoever eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed. My blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood 
dwelleth in me and I in him. As the living father has sent me and I have lived by the father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your father did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread yes. shall live forever. Yes. These things said he unto, uh, these things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. <laughs> Many therefore of his disciples, when they have heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? Jesus knew in himself that his disciple mumbled at it. He said unto them, Do this offend you? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he, where he was before? It is the spirit that quicken, the flesh profit nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning whom they were that believed not and who shall betray him. And he said, Therefore say I unto you that no man cometh unto me except it was given unto him of my father. Listen at verse 66. From that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more will him. Let me read it again. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. I want to preach from a subject today with or without Jesus. Amen. With or without Jesus. Amen. In this text today, it deals with Jesus. Uh, is the bread of life. It talks about how Jesus is the, uh, the true bread from hell. Amen. Jesus made it plain that this is not the bread that your father, that, that Moses and them fed out in Egypt. He said, but this is the bread from heaven. Uh, if you read all the way through you, you find out that Jesus was really referring to himself as the bread of life. How many know that Jesus is the bread of life? As a matter of fact, Jesus is the true bread. There's a lot of different brands of bread that's out there on the market today. There's the Wonder Bread, there's the Mary Jane Bread, there's the Wheat Bread, the Oat Bread. All of these different kind of bread that's out there today is only good for the physical body. But Jesus will refer to the bread that is going to be dealing with our life, dealing with our soul. So Jesus will let them know that our father did eat the, he said, our father did eat the, the manna in the desert. And they were, gave up the bread, which was not from heaven. Amen. In other words, they ate that bread out there. And, but even though you eat the bread that's come out of the, out of the desert, you will die. But Jesus was making it plain to them if you eat this bread. In other words, if you eat me, you shall live forever. Now Jesus was making a parable, showing them, letting them know uh, the physical bread you can eat all you want to, but you eventually will die. But if you eat of this spiritual dead, spiritual bread, we might die on the physical side, but we will live forever. Jesus will let them know I am the proof, the true bread. He would let them know, for this bread of God is not which came down from heaven and given life unto the world. Uh -uh, but he talking about this spiritual bread. All of us need this spiritual bread. Yes. Most of us that love to eat now, sound like your meal is not completed without some bread. P people love bread, but I, I can go without bread myself. Amen. Uh, but some people just love bread, and there's nothing wrong with bread. Amen. Jesus made it plain. He said, I am the bread of life. Mm. He that cometh unto me shall never hunger, neither shall the thirst, because 
I am the bread of life. In other words, ah, when you eat this bread, amen, this bread will give you all the spiritual nourishment that everybody will ever live, uh, ever need in this life. God help me to tell the story today. Why? Because somebody need to know about this bread. Amen. Jesus kept on when the Bible said that he was, he was teaching and while he was teaching, he would let them know. He said, I am the bread of life. In other words, he said, I am the living bread. This bread had life in this bread. And he said, well, I came down from heaven. And then he went on let them know, said, any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. Amen. All of us might want to eat of this bread so that we can live forever. Amen. Not live forever here but we'll be able to live forever with him. I'm talking about with him or without him. Amen. So Jesus began to teach and let them know. He said, now, except that uh, you eat of this bread and accept that you uh, drink of this blood. And they heard him teaching about the bread, but it was a little hard for them to understand what he was saying. Jesus was not talking about physical bread at this time. He was talking about the spiritual bread. And he said, and he said, accepting that you, you know, you eat of my flesh and, and drink of my blood. Amen. Matter of fact, I told you Jesus is all wise. He, he, you know, he's all known. Amen. He said, you know, you, you didn't have to eat of my flesh and, and drink of my blood. And then he talks about, uh, then you will dwell in me and I will be in you. I'm talking about with him or without him. While, while, they was while he was teaching, said, except that you eat of my flesh, except that you drink of my blood. In other words, while, Vandish, that's a while Jesus was teaching, they would listen very attentively. They, they didn't say it out loud, but they start the moment and thinking to themselves. Said, I mean, this is a hard saying. Amen. You talking about eat of your flesh and talk about drink of your blood. In other words, this is a hard saying. This is why I brought it out the other night about the mind. Jesus knows our thoughts sometimes before we were thinking. See, you don't have to say out loud what you're thinking. The Lord already know what you are thinking. And when Jesus told them, he said, now, you know, except that you eat of my flesh and then drink of my blood. In other words, and they mumbled to themselves. They were saying, well, this is a hard saying. In other words, who can do all of that? Jesus has heard them through the spirit. He said, well, do that offend you? Oh, do, do that offend you? If I make a long story short, when Jesus kept on teaching, he didn't stop teaching because they got offended. Whenever you preaching and teaching the word of God, sometimes people will get offended. But you don't stop because people got offended. Amen. Let me try it again. We don't stop because people going to be offended. Amen. Because that will help us along the way. The Bible went on to say that Jesus kept on teaching them. And the Bible didn't say all of them. But after they heard that, the Bible said from that time on, said many of them. He didn't say all of them, but it said many of his disciples. It said they went back. Amen. That's what it said. They, 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 in other words, they rejected. Amen. They turned away from God. It's, it's, it's a dangerous thing to walk away from God because he has the power to do anything but fail. In other words, Jesus, had the, he, Jesus is not the resource of life. But Jesus is the source of life. I'm talking about with him or without him. And, and listen at what Bird 66 said. It said, from that time, many of them, many of his disciples went back. It's right in the text. It said, many of them, of his disciples went back. This is what it said. And walk no more. With him. Amen. Now, that, that word with really stuck out with me. It said, walk no more with him. So we going to be with Jesus or we're going to be without him. Now, let me try it again. We're going to be with him or without him. We can do more with Jesus than we can without him. We can be more with Jesus than we can without him. 
we can go further in life with him than without him. In, in other words, if, if I were going to New York tomorrow, uh, I could do more with $500 with me than $500 what I do not have with me. Amen? As long as I have it with me. You follow what I'm saying? With me to be present. Without me, uh, I'm not present. And when we talk about without, it's saying that uh, you're going to reject Jesus. It said that they walk no more with him. And, and when they talk about walk, it's not like we're walking down the road. In other words, they, they didn't want to conduct themselves as Christians and doing the thing that were pleasing in God's sight. Amen. Oh, yeah. Sometimes God will tell us some stuff. It's hard to, to say sometimes. It's hard to do sometimes. But we're going to have to take God at his word. Amen. But he said they turned me up them. They turned and walk no more with him. Have I got a witness yeah. here? But, but I love the way the text goes on. It keep on reading the verse 66 and 67. You find out uh, that Peter was in this crowd. Uh, wherever Peter, I have to give Peter credit. Peter will always speak up. That when they said many of them turn and walk no more with him. Peter began to say, Lord, and then he, Jesus asked that question again. He asked the rest of them. He said, will you also turn and walk away from me? Peter stood up. He said, thou has the word. That's that what he said. He said, thou has the word to eternal life. In other words, if we go away from you, if we walk without you, we won't have the words to eternal life. So if you walk without him, you don't have his word. Let me try it again. If you walk without him, you do not have his word. Why? Because John chapter 1 verse 1 said, In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. And without anything made, that was made. So listen, we're going to have to be with Jesus. Why? Because he is the door. He is the way. And he's our savior. He has all the power. So we need to be with him. If we're going to make it into God's kingdom while we're on this earth, we're going to have to walk with him, not walk without him. Some say, well, you, you can make it without me. And I can make it without you to a certain extent. But none of us can make it without him. Let me try it one more time. You can make it without me. And I can make it without you. But none of us and all of us collected cannot make it without the Lord. Even though some of them walk around feeling and thinking they can make it by themselves. But I come and let you know you can't make it without Jesus Christ. We need him. Listen, now you might say, well, when I woke up this morning, guess what? Jesus had to touch you. Let me try it one more time. Jesus had to touch you. Because when, when we laid down last night, some way and somehow, very early this morning, it may not have been early for some of y'all, but today he woke us up. So you couldn't, the long car still would have went off. But if, but if he didn't touch you, you would still have been laying right there now. If he didn't touch you, the hearth wheel will probably been backing up to somebody. And you know what? That, that's a praise moment right there. Why? Because I was able to wake up this morning. That's why I, I cannot make it without him. I need him every moment in my life. Somebody wrote us out and said, I can't even walk without him holding my hand. You can't do Let me try one more time. You can't do nothing without him. And it's pride because I, I, I'd rather be with him than without him. I, I can only testify only about my own self. I, I've done wasted too much of my life without him already. So for the rest of my life I want to spoil my God. I wish I had somebody have made up in their mind for the rest of my life I want to be with him. Why watch this? For, for every battle, for every why? You're going to go through some battle. You're going to have to climb some mountains in your life. And you, how many know that when you're traveling or even climbing mountains, you need some spikes to climb the mountain. I'm glad that Jesus is my spike. 
that I could be able to climb the mountain. Have I got a vision? That's good when the Lord is with you. And, and sometimes when you're climbing mountain, you need some ropes in your life. I'm glad that Jesus has is my rope. See, you can wrap him around you that when your foot slip, you won't fall. Have I got a witness here? So that, that goes with everything in our life. You don't need to try to make it through this life without the Lord. You might say, well, I don't need the Lord. I come tell you that you need Jesus. All of us need the Lord. Don't try to go through life without him, but try your best to do everything in your power that I can do it with him. Come on, give God an hand clap of praise. So Peter said, well, he said, well, the so Lord said now, said, he said, well, to whom shall we go? In other words, if we turn away from you, where are we going to go from here? Because he said, thou has the word. That's exactly what he said. He said, thou has the words unto its eternal life. So you can't make it without the word. The word is still power. The word is still uh, empowerment. The word is still our way. You cannot make it without the word of God. Why? That's why we need him. That's why we got to have him on our side. You can't sing your way. You can't preach your way. You can't witness your way. You got to have the word of God. I'm talking about with him or without him. Pure point, God help us here. Life is not a two-way side. You either going to be for him or you're going to be against him. Life is not a two-way side. You're going to either be with him or without him. You will be surprised today how many people is trying to make it without him. But I come to let you know, you can't make it without him. And the reason I love him because I want to be with him because he is the door. Amen. But he, he's the one that's going to allow us to come in. That's why I need to be with him. Have I got a witness here? Because when you're without him, you don't have no security. You don't have no protection. But, but with him, you have all the security. You have all the protection as long as you are with him. Have I got a witness here? When you are for him, if you are not for him, I promise you, you are against him. And when you are for him, guess what? This saying that you will not, re you have not rejected him. Many people have rejected the Lord. But I come out, it's a sad thing to reject him. We need to receive him. Listen. We can do more in every era of our life with the Lord. Why? Because he's our helper. Let me try one more time. He's our helper. You can't make it by yourself. You need some help. When we are with him, we accept him and we agree with him. I'm talking about when we are with him. Some think that they can make it in this cruel world without him. But you can't make it without him. We can't even walk without him. We can't even talk without him. Let, let me draw a, a pen right there. It's like a fish in the water. A fish cannot live without water. I don't care what kind of fish he is. He cannot live without water. And guess what? You can't live without breathing. Watch this. If you take the water from the fish, the fish will die. God take the breath from us. See, see where we are now? And listen, the, the breath that we have is borrowed breath. So how do you think you're going to make it without him and he put breath in you? He put breath in our body. So we don't need to turn and walk away from him. We need to turn and walk to him. Let me try it again. We don't need to turn and walk away from him, but we need to turn and walk with him. Amen. You can't love the world and love God at the same time. You're going to either hate one and love the other. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Mary's baby, the Lamb of God, the little of the valley, the morning star, the great I am, the resurrection. He is not a part-time God. Amen. He is a full-time God. Amen. When you say full-time, what is he? He's a full-time hub. He's a full-time healer. Yes. Mm. He's a full-time deliverer. Yes. He's a full-time doctor. Yes. He's a full-time lawyer. Yes. 
He's a full-time counselor. He's a full-time savior. That, that's what I like about him. He's full-time. And that ain't all. He will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. He will be with you to the end of the world. So therefore, we don't need to turn from him, but we need to turn to him. Because with Jesus on our side, I believe things will work out right. Let me try it again. I said with Jesus on our side, how many know that thing will work out right? How many know with Jesus on your side? One song writes, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, when the enemy rolled up against us, they would have swallowed us up. Hey, I'm going to try one more time. I said, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side. I think that's where somebody ought to be praising God right there. Because if it had not been for the Lord on our side. Oh, when the enemy came up, they would have swallowed us up. And I believe all of us have, have been backed up against the wall. But guess what? He was with us. And I'm glad that he was with me and I was with him. Not that I said it all right. Not that I did it all right. But being with God makes all things all right. Have I got a witness here? Oh, gee, I'm glad that he's not part-time. People will return from him, but you need to turn not from him, but we need to turn to him. But because with Jesus on your side, you'll be able to make it through this journey. Yeah. Have I got a witness here? When Jesus is on our side and when we are with him, we are more than conquer. Let me try it again. When we are with him, we are more than conquerors. Because the devil will eventually try all of us. With Jesus, we are more than confident in him who that love us. Paul said it like this. I can do all things through Christ who strengthen me. Let me try it one more time. He said, I, I can do all things through Christ who strengthen me. I, I just wouldn't wonder that I have anybody here can make this journey with Jesus. Someday and somehow, listen, some today are trying to live without Jesus. You are living, but you are living without him. What do you mean that I'm living, but I'm living without him? You are alive, but you're not living according to the word of God. You can live, but you can live without him. I, I don't want to live without him. I, I, I may stumble, I may make some mistakes in my life, but I don't want to live without him. Or a day go by without him. Let me try it one more time. I don't want a day to go by without him. Because without him, I'm going to make some terrible mistakes. And y'all going to make me strange. He, he's a mind keeper. So I don't want a day to go by without him. They may turn from him. Before it's all over with, we're going to wish we had a turn to him. Why? Because Peter stood up and said, Thou hast the word of eternal life. But when we are with him, yes, you are never alone. And when you are with him, your life has completely been changed. This is why come, when you come to church, you don't mind saying amen. You don't mind clapping your hand. You don't mind singing the song of Zion. Why? Because I'm with him. Matter of fact, I heard that it was yesterday. You don't even hear that song about no never alone. Never. But you are listen, when you're with him, you are never, never alone. alone. Even though when you're going through your trial, you're not alone. Even though when you're going through your sickness, even though when you have your mountains, you gotta go through, even though when we're crying through our battle, we are not alone. Have I got a witness here? So, so it's good to be with that ain't all. He said, for we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord, that call according to his purpose. This morning I came back in here out of Sunday school. I, I, I was thinking about the message with or without him. I, I believe it's in your hymn book, probably page 320. I think that's what, don't turn to it now. Read it later on. It talks about <laughs> without God. I could do that. Now, I read, I said, wow, that was good. Without God, don't turn to it right now. Uh, without God, because see, sometimes I be preaching and y'all be turning to stuff. Don't do it on your time, not right now. And it talks about uh, uh, without God, I could do nothing. And, and I looked at the words on it said, without him, I will fail. Oh, this verse, it said, that's what it said. 
It said without him. How many know without Amen. him? Amen. I will fail. Amen. Let me talk to you. Without him. Amen. Without him. I will fail. And, and then it goes on and say, my without him, my life would be rushed. You know what? Rush, rush is not smooth. Let me try it again. Without him, my life would be rugged. And I can't run on reading that thing again. And then it said, without him, we'll be like a ship. <laughs> See, all of this is without him. Without him, I, when it said I, is personal. Without him, we will fail. I'm going to try it again. Without him, we will fail. It does not matter how good you look. It does not matter how much knowledge that we may have. But without him, oh, we will fail. I kept looking at that thing again. It said, without him, my life would be rugged. What was this? Maybe that's why I come sometimes uh, I'll be having these rugged life. Amen. And even with him, when we have struggles in our life, we got somebody to help us. Amen. Let me try one more time. Even when we do have our struggles in our life as Christians, we still got somebody to help us to go through. And, and what I, the last part I like when he said, he said, you know, without him, we will be like a ship. You know what a ship is without a sail? It'd it be tossed. It'd be too, it's, it's totally out of control. I'm glad I'm with him now because without him, I will be out of control. Let me try it one more time. Without him, I will be totally out of control. Without him, I could not make this journey. So I, I went and studied and found out I had to call some character witness to help me in the sermon on the day. Found out that with God, we can do a lot of things. Have I got a witness here? I, I went to the 23rd division of Psalm and, and found out that how David has said with him things that, will, that we could accomplish with him. Can, can I tell you what David said? Don't turn to it. Now read it after service over here. It's in the 23rd division of Psalm when David was talking about with God. This is what David was saying, said uh, with God. This is what he said in the 23rd Psalm. David was saying, well, the Lord is my shepherd. Then David said, now with him, I got a great relationship. Amen. That's because I'm with him. Oh. David went on and said, I, I, I shall not want. And David said, well, uh, with him, that's all of my supplies. Why? Because I'm with him. David went on and said, he makes me to kind of lie down in the green pasture. David went on and said, you know what? Said that, you know what? That's that's my rest. Jesus is my, that's my resting point there. David kept on saying, said, well, I'm not going to stop there. Said, because he leads me. I'm talking about Jesus now. He said, he leads me beside the still water. And David said, you know what? With him, that's my refreshment. And every once in a while, I need some refreshment. David said, I'm not going to stop there, Jeff, because I'm going to go a little bit further. He said, he restored my soul. David said with him, he's my healer. I, I told you, he's a full-time doctor. He's a full-time healer. Now I got a witness here. David said, well, let's go a little bit further. David said, well, he, he leaded me, not led me, but he leaded me in the path of righteousness. And, and David said, with him, I got a guide. In other words, he's going to guide me as I, he's my navigating ship. David said, well, let's try one more time. He said, well, for his name's sake. I'm doing all of this for his name's sake. And David said, with him, that is the purpose. That's why you ought to praise God because the Lord has been good to you. Have I got a witness in David went on. I, I love David because David said, well, with him, he said, yea, though I walk. I just said about it a while ago. David said, yes, with him, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death. And you know what he said with him that's the testing time in other words there are going to be some testing times in your life but guess what you won't fail you'll pass every time as long as God and Jesus why are you going to pass because Jesus is the answer to every test that you take Jesus is the answer David said well let's go down a little bit further David said well I will not feel no evil because with him, he's my protector. 
I told you he'll be by your side. And David said, for thou art with, that, that word again. That's why David was saying with Jesus. He said, for thou art with me. And when he said thou art with me, he's saying that he is faithful. How many know that Jesus is faithful? He said, well, let's move a little bit further. He said, now, the rod and thy staff. Oh, they comfort me. Uh -huh. And you know what they'll do? When he's with me, he discipline me. I'll be out of order. I, I need some discipline. But Lord, if the Lord is, oh, is with me. David said, well, I'll tell you something else. I had some hard time. I had some good time. But David said, well, like this. He said, Lord, you prepare a table before me. Not in the absence, but in the present of my enemy. Because the Lord is with me, I got hope today. Not only did I have hope, yes sir, but I got that blessed hope. I'm just wondering if anybody else have that hope. They don't even sing that song no more. I hope it won't be this way always. And I'm glad today because the Lord is with me. I believe we are preaching because the Lord is with me. I got hope today. I, I know it's getting cloudy sometimes, but because the Lord is with me. And look like I'm not going to make it out of this situation that I'm in. But because of the Lord is with me. Oh, somebody ought to have some hope now. Even though the doctor may be giving you a bad report, but just because the Lord is with you, you ought to have some hope. David said, well, I want to share something else with the Jesus. In other words, he said, thou, Lord, talking about you. Thou anointed my head with oil. And you know what he said? Because the Lord is with me, he concentrates me. I'm so glad that the Lord is concentrating me. It's a blessing just to be concentrated. And when you're concentrated, you're set aside for the master of you. And you know what David said? That ain't all. Since I've been concentrated, listen, thou, 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 my cup runneth over. In other words, when my cup runs over, that gives me abundantly. In other words, when the Lord is with you, you will never run out. I don't know about you, but every once in a while, my cup running over. When I think of the goodness of the Lord and all that he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I want to thank God every once in a while and every now and then, you ought to let your cup run over. Is anybody here now? Because the Lord is with you, your cup ought to be running over. When you start to think about where God has brought you from, how God has brought you out, how God has made a way out of nothing, your cup ought to run over. That's because the Lord is with me. Let's go a little further. This is good. David said, well, surely goodness and mercy. It's ready in the 23rd song. You can read it for yourself. He said, surely goodness and mercy. I'm talking about with him or without him. But now David is explaining when he is with you. He said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Not some of the day. But that's a blessing right by itself. Now, don't you know he is goodness? Yes, yes. And don't you know he is mercy? Yes. That's a sign you with him and he with you. He says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow. It's a blessing that it follow you. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. It's for all the day of my life. And you know what he said? With him, that's a blessing. <laughs> oh, with him, that's a blessing right by yourself. And listen to what he said. He said, you know what? And, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. When, when he said, I will dwell in the house of the Lord, he may not be talking about the top of me, but, but I will dwell in the presence of the Lord. And when you're dwelling in the presence of the Lord, you are saying you are with him. And he said, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. He, he didn't say forever, man. We got to stop it. Let's just dwell, dwell with one part. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. And you know what David said? With him. That's security. I don't have, when you are with him, you don't have nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. Let, let me draw a pen. And there was a time when, when Jesus was traveling. God help me here. When, when Jesus was traveling, I believe it was Peter with him. And they got down to the ferry where they had to cross over from one side to the other side. And they, they had to have a ferry to go across on the other side. Just keep in mind, Jesus didn't have no cat and Peter didn't have no need. What we going to do? Because... Peter 
were with Jesus. Jesus said, get you a line. Put some bait on it. Say, throw it out there. And say, the first fish that you can, I will fail. <laughs> he said, I will fail. Will be in his mouth. Won't it make a way? Amen. I'm talking about when you with him. And, and sometimes in life, we get backed up against the wall. We don't see how we're going to come out. But if the Lord is with you, that, 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 no, when the Lord, when the Lord is with you, guess what? He will be a bridge over trouble. It is good to have the Lord with you. I mean, when, when you're with him and have a spiritual accident, he'll be insurance for you. Oh, my God. Oh, God, can I have a witness here? One more point. We'll soon, we'll soon get out of here, God. Listen, listen. he said, and, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. That's saying that it's going to be secured. Uh -huh. Preston, this is the last one on this call. And he said one word that stands out. He said, forever. Uh -huh. Now, since the Lord is forever and, and I'm with him, I, that's eternity. So if you stay with him, guess what? You can make it in God's kingdom. That won't be just for a little while, but how many know that would be for forever? Here's a few more points we'll soon get out of here. Now that I'm with him, it makes a difference in my life because we are with him. When you're with him, you have all the blessings of God. When we are with him, guess what? We are sanctified. Uh-oh. When we're with him, we are pure and we are holy. When we are with him, we are new creature. When we are with him, we are in our right mind. When we are with him, we have the blessings of God. When we are with him, our sin have been taken away. That's a blessing right by itself. When we are with him, him, we are sanctified. When we are with him, we are God masterpiece. It's a blessing to be with God. You can become a what? A masterpiece. I'm talking about when we are with him. Quran, uh, but the Bible let us know our life is here. Colossians chapter 3 and 3 said my life and your life is here with Christ in God. So when we are with him, guess what? We are being quick. He makes us alive when we are with him. When we're with him, our life is being lifted. We are elevated when we're with him. When we lift him, we have a new life. What did Paul say about it? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become brand new. When you're with him, you have eternal life. That's why I come I want to stay with him because I'm looking for eternal life. See, when you, we are living in time now, but when we step out of time and step in eternity, time will start and stop, but eternity never stops. That's why I want to be with him because I want to spend eternity with him. Let me try it one more time. I want to spend eternity with him. Why? Because the Bible says Jesus is coming back. I think John 14 said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also. He said, because in my father's house is many men. If it were not so, I would have told you. He said, if I go and prepare a place, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. So I want to be You may not be in a good shape right now, but you ought to have your mind, I want to be with him. Have I got a witness here? When you're with him, you have a preserved life. When you're with him, you have a Christ-like life. When you're with him, you can look, you can walk over places that normal people could not normally walk there. I believe it's in the book of Isaiah. It is in the book of Isaiah. It talks about it says, when you walk through the water, you won't have to worry about the water drowning. Why? Because the Lord is with you. The water represents trouble. It says when you walk through the fire, you won't even get burned. Sometimes there will be some hot situations in your life. But guess what? Because the Lord is with you. You'll be able to walk out of that hot situation. Because when the enemy try to prop things against you, because the Lord is with you, he'll keep your mind in perfect. Let me try it one more time. Because the Lord is with you. I'm so glad that I don't want to try to make it from one day to another day without the Lord. Why? Because I'm going to make a mess somewhere. But as long as the Lord is with me, he will calm me down. He will call me to hold my peace. Because the Lord is with me. 
when I used to was stand there, but now I'll be able to walk away. Why? Because, because the Lord, He is with you. It's a blessing read by yourself because the Lord is with you. If you want to we'll soon get out of here, but I'm glad to know that the Lord is with you. Why? Because I would have lost it a long time ago. And now not only am I with the Lord, the Lord is with me. Have I got a witness here? Now the Lord is with us. When you're with him, you are made alive and you are given eternal life when you are with him. We, we may be saved now, but we have always been saved. See, you can't let your past dictate your future. Let, let me drive that. Listen, if we had to go to help on our past, all of us be good. And y'all look at me funny. If we had to go to help on our past, all of us would be through. That's why come Jesus died on the cross. That he will wash away our sin. Do not let your past interfere with your, your present and your future. Because all of us, all, A-L-L-B, all have a sin nation. All have sin. All have done wrong. But he gave us another chance. And this is why we don't need to sit down on God. As good as God has been to us. Where God brought us from. We ought to be lifting our hands. We ought to be praising God. Thank God. I'm glad I'm with him. And you know one thing about it? You don't have to have money to be with him. What do you need? Just faith. That's all you got to do. Just have faith to be, be with him. Amen. Let's, let's go now. Listen, when, when we're with him, we are made alive in him. I, I thank God for that. And when we're with him, guess what he'll do? He will show us mercy. People don't want to show you mercy, but he'll give us salvation. Why? Because when we're with him, well, God, this is good. God, this is good. I, I believe it's in the book of Acts. Don't turn to it now. Acts chapter 4. Amen. When it talks about how, uh, chapter 3 tells it too. When it talks about how this, this, this man was laid in the gate of beautiful. He has to wash an arm. He, he laid there. Somebody carried him every day. Laid him at that gate. But Peter and John came along. And he guess what Peter and John said? Look on up. But he said, look on up. He said, but such as we have. He said, we don't have no money, no silver, no gold. But says, such as we have. And the Bible said they caught him by the right hand. And when they caught him by the right hand, said it gave his anchor bone strength. Or gave him strength. And guess what? That man got up and started leaving and went on into the temple. Uh oh. And started praising God. And guess what? He was sitting like we sit and crying, be all quiet and all dignified and all cute. When God do something for you, that's the wrong time to be cute. See, sometimes we got to get uglier. <laughs> that's fine. Sometimes we got to get uglier. Amen. Why would God do something for you? You don't have time to put your makeup back in place, put your hair back in place. You got to praise God for what you are. Amen. So that's a blessing by itself. And even when the man started leaping and praising God, thanking God, no doubt somebody that passed by saw that same man. But it went in there and the Bible said he leaped. And he started praising God. And I think it's in the next chapter when it talks about, said, uh, how did this man gain his strength? Peter and John said, don't look at us like we had some credit. We didn't have no credit. And I believe around verse 12 when it says, there's no other name under the sun whereby men must be saved. So guess what? I want to be with him. Why? Because his, there's power in his name. There's healing in his name. There's deliverance in his name. There's salvation in his name. But there's something about the name of Jesus. Jesus. Isn't it so uh, something about his name? Everything that you need yeah. is in his name. So that's a blessing read by itself. So when we are with him, God, God, this is good. When you listen, even when a child is with their mother and father, they don't worry about paying that. They just pick it up and put it in the book. I take that back. Not only a child grown for a little too. <laughs> Amen. We, we have adults do the same thing. Yeah, put stuff right in the buggy and, and want people to pay for it to this same thing. Blessing. When, when you're with him, you are blessed with wisdom. 
Amen. I said, when you are with him, you are blessed with wisdom. Oh my God. And when you will with him, he will give you a new spiritual life. I'm glad God changed my life. And when you're with him, guess what? He will give you in the undeserved faith. I'm talking about when you're with him. He will give you undeserved faith. Paul, can you come just a minute? You can go back. For by grace are you saved. Grace is a undemerit faith. We don't even deserve it, but he give it to us. Oh, yeah. Let me try it again. We don't even deserve it. We listen. You and I are here today not because we are small, not because we have money, not because we look so good. We are just here by the grace of God. Yes, sir. I can bring it a little bit lower than that. We are not here this Sunday because we live so holy from last Sunday up to now. But we are just here. That's why I come it's good to be with him. Because he'll give you grace in the time of need. It's something about being with him. Instead of being without him. With him, he will protect you. With him, he will protect you from your enemies round about. With him, you are being made free. Why? Because whom the Lord set free. Oh, oh, come on here. He is free indeed. This is the last call we're going to be through. God, this is good. I'm glad. I'm with him. I haven't said it all right. I have not done it all right. But God knows I'm still with him. I'm still with him. Amen. You know what? I'm still, I, I stumbled, I fell along the way, but I'm still with him. And it's a blessing just to be with him. Okay. Last but not least, with him. Here's some absolute that we needed grab hope to. I'm talking about when we are with him. He forgave us and made us the righteousness of God. See, when you're with him, you are not the made the righteousness because you come to church, because you sing, because you preach. When you're with him, he makes you the righteousness of God. And you know what? Because I'm with him. Romans chapter 8, it talks about I'm no longer being condemned simply because I'm with him. L let me draw a line right there. I never will forget. I'm through. Uh, uh, back in 72, 73, uh, when I was going to we were picking me to college then, and we were going out there, and every day, just about every day, we would come back up to Parker's, and we would eat lunch. And sometimes I would eat by myself, sometimes I eat with a group. And when we come out of class, come back and eat lunch up there, sometimes there'd be a group of people there. And one day we had lunch at Parker's, and we got ready to leave, and this guy, they were sitting on the next dinner table to us, and we got ready to leave, and left, and get what he said, only them. He <laughs> <laughs> had to pay, because he said, I'm only them. But <laughs> well, when it comes <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is, all the mistakes and stuff that we do wrong because we are with him, he'll forgive us for our sins. At that time, in 74, at that time, you could buy a barbecue sandwich for 75 cents and a drink was 25 cents. For a dollar, I get one sandwich and a drink. And parking on Memorial Drive. Sandwich was 75 cents and drink was 25 cents. I didn't call you for a dollar. This is lucky. Try it now. Try it. <laughs> Amen. But with him, I'm healed. I'm talking about spiritually. I'm healed. And I'm healthy. See, on this Christian journey, you will get wounded. Amen. But 
Jesus will be abandoned. Has yes. anybody ever been wounded spiritual wise? Yes. People prayed for you, people prayed with you, but you couldn't get healed until Jesus was with you. He can heal your own wound. And, and, and sometimes, and, and sometimes when you get wounded, yeah. if, if if that wound is not taken care of, uh -huh. you'll bleed to death. But Jesus already bled for me. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, He already bled for me. So now when I get wounded, I don't have to worry about being bled to death. Why? Because I'm with Him. Oh, you got nothing to worry about when you're with Him. Guess what? He'll make a way out of nowhere. Somebody said, won't he do it? As a matter of fact, I know he'll do it. You don't have to be a witness in here today to know that he will make a way out of nowhere. When you're with him, you have eternal life. When you're with him, you have the blessings of Abraham. And when you're with him, we have a sound mind. Yes. But in my closing remark, I'm glad to be with him. Yes, I believe it's in the book of Genesis, probably chapter 5, verses 21 through 23, somewhere in that neighborhood. You will find out that the Bible says that Enoch walked with God. <laughs> oh, Enoch lived a long life, what, 365 years? Lived a long time. Talking about he walked with God. There is a blessing. But just being with God. Well, well, what was the blessing? Just being with God. You can search the script. There's not a lot said. There's a lot, a whole lot of details about Enoch. Well, all day we know that Enoch walked with God. And guess what? He, he, he walked with God until when, when it's time for him to go, say, God, just tuck him around. So, so you started walking with God. But just keep that on walking. And it doesn't matter how many folk turn away from you, how many folk walk against you, you keep that on walking with God. Well, say so Enoch walked with God. The Bible said he was not because God took him right on the way. Talking about they never had a fuel, they never had a bear because he walked with God. He not only on Elijah. Walk right. with God. Right. That ain't all. He'll know when God just can him right on away. But guess what? That's where I want to live, so. Yes, I, I, I want to walk, yeah. so. I want to be so when it's yeah. it hit, when it's when it yours to call and mine to answer, I want to just go around. Right yes, yeah. Wait a minute, don't, I just, don't y'all get I'm not homesick now. I'm talking about when, it's, when I gotta go. And that left me to do when I gotta go. I want to do this. Take a breath on out. But guess what? I want to walk with him. So when it's all over, when it's all said and done, I want to hear him say, Well done. Go back and read the scripture that they turned said, Many of them. Look at our life now. Look at our churches now. Many of them turned. And walk no more with the Lord. I don't know what the statistic is today, but the first part of the year, of this year, was well, 12,000 preachers over the world just quit preaching, just walk right out of the They ain't bothered God no more. Something wrong with that picture. Somebody just got up and went. God didn't come. But you will have to walk with Him. Now, when you're with him, there are going to be storms. There will be trials. There will be tribulation. But you got somebody to help you, to carry you through. He's a burden bearer. There's a difference between with God and without him. I'd rather be with him than to be without him. Because if I'm with him, he'll supply my need. If I'm with him, he'll heal my body. If I'm with him, he will deliver me. God will see you through. If there's a person, a person in this building that do not know Christ and prefer 
to be with him. You can stand where you are or you can call today. And we're going to pray for you because you're going to need him. Trust me. Things are going to get worse before they get better. Reverend John Chan, he used to pastor this church for a long time before I even got it. At the old church. Matter of fact, I was going to win chapel and listen to him. And he was saying, worry like that. He said, things ain't getting no better. And you know what? I can witness to it. It's not getting no better. If you are here, the quality was saying, you don't have to come to the pulpit. You can stand right where you are. You know your life. If you want to renew your life, come back to him. You can do more with him than you can without him. The scripture said, men have turned and walked no more. In other words, they rejected him. Don't reject him today. Amen. He sat with his arms stretched wide open, saying words like this. Come unto me, all ye that are laid and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burdens is light. The day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. If thou confess with thy mouth and believe in thou that God had raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You can sing a verse or two. If you hear, just stand. Don't worry about who's going to look at you. If you strayed it away, come back. You can come back. Thank you, Brian. Amen. You were faithful. There'll be a person that's our prayer. You may stand where you are. Prayer can go where we cannot go. Prayer can do what we cannot do. If you want to stand for somebody, if you want to stand with somebody, you still can do that too. Come on. Sir. Brother Lucy Bunn, Joyce M. Staten, Stephanie S.Q., Jeanette Bunn, Carla Atkinson, Mother Gladys Linton, Arthur Everett, Mike Outlaw, Rosalind Crandall, Lorenzo Suggs, Dolores Howard, Daisy E. Brown, Jeremy Ebron, Johnice Hines, Dolores Coates, Nikki Goss Cross, Jesse J. Staten, Master Jerry Smith, Frederick Schiff, Russell Evans, Jane Smith, Mother Louise Stanley, Siri Mazel, Tamika Gorham, Anita Jones, Pastor Walter Hines, Donzel Williams, Bernice Gowen, Annie M. Wallace, Chloe Jones, Peggy Bunn, Joseph Robertson, uh, Terry Latham, Michelle William Goss, Brenda, I'm sorry, Shirley Hunter, Dorothy Barrett, Mother Eva Clemens, Mary Godley, J.C. Brown, Lil Williams, Julius Bell, Carnell Baker, Tiffany Moore, Brother Walter Atkins, Mary, Pastor Mary Spradley, Loomis Little, Robert Gore, Carney, Robert Carney, Ivana Smith. Those are the ones who name the sick. Continue to keep them in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, O oh God, Lord, we thank and praise you, O oh God, for every name that we're called out on today, O oh God. God, we ask you right now, Lord God, to look on everyone that's standing on today, O oh God. God, we ask you right now, Lord God, to bless them, O oh God. 
Oh God, you know that disease, you know that needs, oh God, you know that desire is on today, oh God. And God, we ask you right now, Lord God, we touch and agree, oh God, that you will bless them, oh God. Oh God, we ask you to touch those that are sick on today, oh God. Oh God, from the crown of their head down to the sole of their feet, oh God. Oh God, we ask you to bless those that are going through, oh God. Oh God, we ask you to turn that situation around, oh God. Oh God, somebody's seeking a job on today, oh God. Oh God, we ask you to open up doors for them, oh God. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, somebody's at death door on today, oh God. Oh God, we ask you right now, oh God. Oh God, to work a miracle, oh God, for them, oh God. Oh God, we ask you to move. In the mind of way, oh God. Oh God, we ask you right now, Lord oh God, yeah. to have your way, oh God, in their life, oh God. Help them to choose you on today, oh God. Help them to walk with you, oh God, on today, oh God. And God, if they're walking without you, oh God, oh God, let them know that they can come back to you, oh God. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, we ask you to work miracles, oh God, for them, oh God. Oh God, we ask you right now, Lord God. Oh God, to bless them, oh God, in the mind of way, oh God. Help them to cry out to you, oh God. Oh God, what must I do to be saved, oh God. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, you say you're married to the backslide on today, oh God. Oh God, they can come back to you, oh God. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Have your way, oh God, in their life, oh God. Whatever they may be going through, oh God. Whatever they're facing on today, oh God. Oh God, we ask you right now, oh God. The fix and form, oh God. To turn that situation around, oh God. Oh God, do what's never been done before, oh God, in their life, oh God. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, when the enemy say no, oh God. Oh God, you can say yes on today, oh God. Oh God, no, I ask you right now, oh God. No, continue to walk with them, oh God. Oh God, even on next week, oh God. Whatever they face, oh God. Whatever they go through, oh God. Oh God, we ask you to bless them through it, oh God. Take them through it, oh God, right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, somebody got to go to court on today, oh God. But oh God, ask you to go before them, oh God. Oh God, we ask you to bless them, oh God. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. And Lord, we give you all glory, all honor, all praise, oh God. Oh God, belonging to you, oh God. Oh God, somebody got pain in the body, oh God. Oh God, we ask you to touch him right now, oh God. Oh God, touch and heal, oh God. Oh God, move that pain, oh God. Oh God, that's in that body, oh God, right now, oh God. Oh God, we ask you right now, oh God, to have your way, oh God. Not never before, oh God. Oh God, continue to bless our pastor, oh God. Oh God, our first lady, oh God. Continue to touch them, oh God. Continue to bless them, oh God. Lord, pour back into him, oh God, what he have pulled out on today, oh God. And God, we ask you give them their heart's desire, oh God. Whatever they need on today, oh God. God, we ask you to bless them with on today, oh God. Lord, we ask you to move, oh God, in a mighty way, oh God. Bless the children, oh God. Bless the grandchildren, oh God. Bless the great-grandchildren, oh God. Oh God, in a mighty way, oh God. Look at our children, oh God, that's going to school, oh God. Lord, cover them with your blood. Lord, oh God, make them, Lord, make it easy for them, oh God. Lord, those that's in college, oh God, Lord, we ask you to make it easy for them, oh God. Oh God, we ask you to bless the parents, oh God. Oh God, let's send their children to college, oh God. God, we ask you to make it easy for them, oh God. Oh God, we ask you right now, oh God, to have your way, oh God. Move by your, move in the mighty way, oh God. And Lord, we give you all glory, honor, and praise, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's give first that name. Thank you. 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 Thank 19 years that uh, we're celebrating. We've been in the new church. How many years, Pastor? Really? We've been here 19 years and 100 and the old. But truly, we thank God for that on today to be able to honor that. Isn't that a blessing? Amen. That this church has been established. I'm going to ask Brother Ewan to come and give us a little history on it. For those that don't know, 
and maybe next time we could do more. Um, we could do a sheet on it and give it out to each family the history. I think we did that before yeah, about the um, history of the St. John 120, 119 years. If you don't have a sheet, you'd like to know she would get that to you, but she'd come forth now to bring you that information. Thank you. Truly, I thank God for that word on today. Thank God for our pastor. I do honor our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to our pastor and all the minister here on tonight, on, on today, and the deacons, you, you, and you. I thank God for that word. I do. Mm. Without him, I can do nothing. Even standing here. Can't even stand up without him. But we came to do the history for St. John Missionary Baptist Church Soul Saving Center. And before it was Soul Saving Center, as we moved over here on this side, it was St. John Missionary Baptist Church. And I won't go through the whole thing, I'll skip through some things, but so that those who do not have the history, and Evangelist Black said that you can get the history, the history is on our website, and it is St. John Stokes. Dot org. Our history um, is out there as well if you want to take time to read it, but I will be able to get you a full copy if you should desire. So can you imagine what life was like nearly 120 years ago? The land was not developed, lots of trees, woodlands, all roads were dirt and unpaved. Most of the farmhouses or tenant houses were unpainted. That's what they lived in. Those houses that were looking like just gray wood because the weather had beaten it up so hard. That was a way of life back then at that time for our foreparents and sharecroppers. They had to tend the land of the person who owned the house in which they lived. Blacks owned very few homes and land in the early 1900s. But thanks be to God, the situation has now turned around. The way most people got together back then was fellowship, prayer meeting, going to church. Churches were not as numerous as they are now. Service was only once a month for some. And after toil and hard manual work all day, people would get relief by praising God the only way they knew how, with some of them, by praying, singing, very mean from hymns that were sometimes still saying now, as you just heard one, without him. I can do nothing. And I, I do want to skip just a little bit ahead. I was sitting there, I remember it was Pastor Grice, one of the ministers that came out from under Pastor Black, that used to sing that song, that um, I can do nothing without him, but with him, I can do anything. And I, I thought about that sitting there as he was um, preaching so forcibly. So let us um, go forth and imagine what took place as we go from the old to the new. It's a two-part history from the old to the new church that we now know as St. John. It started in the early 1900s, as I first stated. It was an old farmhouse. Few people gathered together in the prayer meetings with a discussion while waiting for others to come. They talked for a brief moment, then decided to table the discussion until later. And when others arrived, others could hear them saying, I must tell Jesus. Count your blessings. Where he leads me, I will follow. These were hymns that brought joy and comfort to the soul. History through speculation of these 119 years after the prayer meeting discussion came, with the growth needing a growth because of the size of the house that they were in. Church meeting date was set to continue that discussion and about the meeting in the old farmhouse. The talk was going to be about overgrowth and how it was getting too small. So there was a need for change to build or relocate. So the meeting was called to order. Again, another hymn, the first song that was sang was Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. There was a scripture reading and then the prayer was prayed. Next song was a charge I have to set the atmosphere, a charge to keep I have of God to glorify a never dying soul to save and fit for the sky. Those are powerful hymns that minister still yet to today. Now it's time for the meeting, Mr. Chairman. I have a proposition to make. Since we're outgrowing this old house, I think it's time for us to build our own church. So we need to find some land on which to build. The members were in agreement. 
There were trustees, Hubert Perkins, Alfred Crandall, John Jenkins. They looked for land, found, purchased a quarter acre of land from LT and Lydia Perkins for $9. Ain't that amazing? On September 12, 1903, it was called Missionary Church. 1904, Missionary Church was completed and renamed to Piney Grove Baptist Church for unknown reasons. The name was changed to St. John Missionary Baptist Church. In the early church, the deacons and other leaders were not identified. After that church became St. John, the deacons were Buddy Perkins, Ananias Clemens, James Parker, Sellers Ward, Rufus Moore, Will Parker, Marcellus, Marcellus House. There were other leaders in the church which were elevated to a higher level through divine intervention. God inspired and elevated the following men to carry the word out of St. John. They were Robert Mobley, Ashley Daniels, James A. Daniels, Jesse Ray Robertson, former mothers of the church were Ella Parker, Andy Ward, Patty Parker, Amy Daniels, Emma Barnes, Rosa Mae Perkins, Julius Tyson, and Goldie Andrews. Deacons Paul Moore and Doc Chance helped in leading and laying a foundation for St. John. Anthony Grice, Jesse Evans Sr., Jerry Little were the deacons at St. John in which there were only six pastors since its foundation. We selected the seventh. Our pastor whom we have on today, Pastor Gregory Black. Amen. There have been some modifications and additions over the years, but the most recent change you can see here on today, the Soul Saving Center, where the pastor we have on today, Pastor Gregory B. Black, is our founder. Amen. The seventh pastor of St. John is none other than Pastor Gregory B. Black, as forestated. He is an anointed and God-fearing man chosen and sent to Amen. us by God. He believes in preaching and teaching the word of God, whether you like it or not. And he talked about in his message, whether you offend someone, keep on preaching. And he, he does preach, does do what he preaches. The word is delivered in such a way that it causes you to soul search or examine yourself. It's up to you to make the necessary changes. Just as we use an atlas or a road map, Pastor Black uses the Bible as his guide and Jesus, his commander-in-chief. After being at St. John for a while, Pastor Black saw that, two, that the two deacons were getting old and in bad health and needed some help. So in looking out over the congregation, he sought for direction. So he called on God, and Donnie Brown, Jerry Smith were the first two deacons installed under his leadership. Later, Edward Clemens, Julius Perkins, Brodew, were installed. The following mothers were installed. Lavinia Askew, Catherine Ward, Marjorie Perkins, whom we um, laid her to rest on March last year. Mar Marjorie Perkins, Eva Clemens. Eva Clemens is still with us. She'll be 98, no, 97 this year, I do believe. And Lillian Morning, under his leadership. August 9th, 10th, and 12th, we move along a little bit further to 2001. Well, 1992 was the year that our pastor became pastor of St. John Missionary Baptist Church Soul Saving Sunday. Can we give God a hand clap of praise for our awesome leader? August 19th and 12th, 2001, St. John held its first annual women's conference. The theme was Women on a Move of God. So we continue to thank God as in 2001, the vision was given to Pastor Black to enter for an interview was conducted about the vision that God had given him. And he talked about the vision, how it came to him. He shared it with the church. The church, the church got on the board. And here we are today. And in September 2005, the groundbreaking ceremony took place. And I'm sorry, transaction were completed in July 15, 2004. And the groundbreaking ceremony occurred in September 2005. The building actually in October 2004 continued until 2005 where we have now the finished product. We can see that the vision came to pass. And I'm skipping over the, the interview that was given because there were several questions and, and he never missed no more than 10 or 15 days 
um, coming out here to make sure that everything was in place. Um, he sacrificed a lot of his own labor um, hours, um, saved the church a whole, whole lot of money, some thousands of dollars for the work that he did, not just overseeing, but for the work that he did in this building. For our pastor is also um, an electrician. So in September 2005, the St. John Church family met at the old church on Highway 903. I hope I'm pointing in the right way. <laughs> and walked to the new sanctuary on Briar Swamp Road. The march was led by our Pastor Black. There was approximately 100 to 125 people who walked 1.7 miles. And our first lady told y'all about that last week, about those two ladies. <laughs> Who's that? Sister Joanne. <laughs> but to God be the glory, we made it and we're here today. So we had at 3 o'clock p.m. there was a ribbon cutting ceremony and a dedication service. The church was run over. We have pictures of that too. We're prayerful that we'll have a committee also going forth next year with Pastor Black permission that we can try to really honor. Uh, have another honor ceremony for 120 years that we'll be approaching upon and it's good that we can get started today um, Not today, but soon if it's okay with Pastor Black Amen. So on uh, 2006 <clears throat> 2006 the fellowship hall was named in our pastor honor Women's conference where the prayer garden in 2006 was added as a permanent edifice to our facility and in August 2007, the cornerstone, which is out front, when you walk up the steps to your right, you will see all the pastors' um, names that are written. The pastors, Reverend Matt Cotton, 1904 to 1906. Reverend Cornelius Brown, 1907 to 1909. James A.G. McNair, 1910 to 1949. Reverend John Chanson, which his granddaughter sits here today. Ms. Verna Goss, raise your hand, Ms. Verna. This is Pastor John Chanson's granddaughter. 1950 to 1980. Reverend L.D. Bazell, 1982 to 84. Reverend M.A. Riddick, 85 to 91. And today, from 1991, our Pastor Gregory B. Black continues to live in the servant that's worthy. The cross behind the choir was added also as a permanent part of the edifice. Our social media page was added, Facebook, in which many are attending and looking at today in 2001, July 31st, 2001. And in 2014, there was an eternal memorial candle ceremony that was um, put on here by our Pastor Black and God laid on his heart to bring everyone back, those who had loved ones who have gone on and had a candle lighting ceremony and a service in their honor for all their work and their labor. And we praise God that of the 128 candles that were lit in honor of each of those deceased, there was a plaque out on the wall. And we just give God praise for all that he continues to do in this ministry. 2014, December 2014, December 2014, yes. Pastor Gregory Black gave his victory speech, noting the completion of the vision, the soul saving center. That month marked the celebration of the church paid in full by our Pastor Gregory Black. There was a burning here, the, the deed here in the bucket. It was a glorious time that people had the little devices that they praise God with. And we just continue to give God the glory for what he has done, is doing, and is going to continue to do. And in 2015, the St. John Community Food Giveaway is a ministry that was added to the service to serve the community and the surrounding areas. And this was a ministry that was in partnership with Pastor Rodney Coles, and our director is our First Lady, Evangelist Patricia Black. And we thank God, and we are reapers of that blessing that has come through this ministry. We can go around sometimes, and we can share in that. So during our 2015 Annual Women's Conference, our Patricia Black received her license to preach as an evangelist, carrying the gospel in Jesus Christ. Amen. God be the glory. Uh, back in the back of the church, as I first stated, the 2015, um, there was a barn that was erected, 
and in 2016, um, the Youth Incarceration Prevention Ministry was added under Pastor Black. This is another ministry, in addition to all the other ministries that have been added. You can go out to our website and you can see a list of those ministries on that page again, St. John's, St. John's Stokes. Dot org is the website and also the sidewalk that was added and the cross that everyone sees when they're coming up the steps i mentioned miss Vernon, her husband the late matt Goss, was the one that installed that cross out front um, on the front of our church out there and that was in 2016. 2017 the church and countless other went in prayer for our pastor oh, he needed open heart surgery that year and today we thank God that he is still here with us. <laughs> and that's the when the time um, came when the doctors were done and everything was done, Sister Black, she's like, y'all, you, you can go ahead on, because I was at work. She said, you can go ahead on. So I told Tina, come on, walk with me, her um, daughter-in-law. So the first thing that Pastor Black said when he came through was, God did it. God did it. Won't he do it? mighty work, miracles happening after miracle. The church purchased a brand new van in 2018, 2019, and we um, talk about how we have lost loved ones. Um, the brother Matt Goss lost um, his life, and our, um, it would kill my uncle, um, lost their life also. Um, in 2019, um, if you have looked out on the Facebook page, you'll see where I shared how the testimony from Deacon Jones is a mighty testimony. If you have not gone out to that Facebook page, how he gave his testimony, how God have healed his body and touched his body. And he kept him from how long, Deacon Jones? When you first got sick, how long? 2005? 2005. And he's still here today to tell the story. I was having a double lung liver transplant to the point where he had no oxygen. I can't tell the testimony. Only Deacon Jones can tell it like he can. Yes, and we thank God for his wife Sally standing right by his side. And again, these um, things can be found out on the website or our social media um, Facebook page. Um, in 2020, we all know that we went under a world pandemic but God is still in charge. And in that time, it, there were some things that were put in place so that we still could get the word. Because again, we thank God for a leader and those are under his leadership to carry out those things that need to be done. So a lot of things are done behind the walls and, and where you don't see it going on, but some things are going on to make a way that God will make a way out of no way. So on April 3rd, when the church had shut down for a while, no one was able to come in. On April the 3rd, our pastor was led to send out a message via text or social media. He and our evangelist Black uh, sent this message out. And it was a great greeting because we've seen so many that responded. It's like they were waiting for some type of a word of encouragement, word of hope. And it was Psalms 27 he had given, The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? And Romans 8 and 28 declares, We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose. And he told the saints to be encouraged that this too shall pass. And we stood on the word of God in Psalms 91, that we are under the umbrella of our Savior. And July 26, 2020, we realized that the, the Sunday worship, um, there was a surprise drive through. Our sister Joanne was the one that kind of orchestrated that, where no one had been coming because of the pandemic. But, you know, our pastor, he would love to see the faces. So there was a drive through. Who took part in that drive through? Raise your hand. That was an awesome time where we were able to come by and just give a shout out, blow our horn. You knew how it was. We were excited. Definitely most excited. That was a happy time. That also can be found on our St. John YouTube page. Uh, we had, you know, several church anniversary and past anniversary. Not too much have gone on um, since the pandemic has been in place. But nevertheless, the word has not stopped. The word continued to go forward. Our pastor yes. continued to be faithful in Bible study, teaching, and prayer. Still going and, and rendering funeral services and just going and, and the others also going out in ministry to the jail ministry, to the homes 
and to the shelter to deliver food. The ministry continues to go on and the church will continue to run on. And whether those who are come and go, we thank God for God adding to the church daily, as the word says, such as should be saved. And we thank God for all those souls that have joined in this ministry, the St. John Missionary Baptist Church Soul Saving Center. And our first lady last week, I know we're a little um, lengthy, but our first lady talked about from maintenance to ministry. So in just a summary, from an old tenant house to the church beside the highway, to the soul saving center yeah. from hard bottom benches to plush and cushion pews from raising the window for cool air and lighting an old gas heater for heat to pressing a thermostat on the wall look how far he's brought us look how far we've come we're not where we ought to be but we're not where we used to be we thank you lord we thank you lord we thank you lord for all that you have done. We thank you, Lord. And that was a great time, you know, to just look back at all what God is doing. 119 years, almost 120. Uh, we thank God for how he continued to allow service to go through, whether through by social media, even with the uh, ministry, the youth ministry, youth incarceration ministry, doing it through Facebook, those that have been faithful. Uh, we lost um, some of our loved ones over the past year. As I mentioned before, Bob Purvis, very faithful. Yeah. And his wife, uh, Mr. Reith and daughter, uh, Miss Veronica, is up in the choir stand. Uh, we continue to keep all those families in prayer. Miss Lavinia Florno, our mother, and also um, our Miss Yvonne um, and her son, Derek. Yeah. Um, if I'm missing anyone, someone please call their name out. So we just thank God for also in uh, this year, um, at the very beginning, our pastor was asked to render the 7-7 the seven, seven heaven prayer, where there was a seven-minute prayer call um, every Wednesday of January. And some of the um, the ones who uh, rendered those prayers were Evangelist Barbara Stokes, Sister Brenda Ewan, um, and Evangelist Rogers. And our pastor laid it off on the first Wednesday in that January. We thank God for the word of prayer going forth and ministering to those who are in need. And the flooring was done outside in the front. The bathrooms were redone in 2023. Um, there's some more things that have happened. But you know, I just want to uh, say here what uh, the poet Maya Angelou said. He said, do the best you can until you know better. Then when you know better, do better. So all that we're doing today is because we have learned better. Because a long time ago, we were just paying dues. We were just paying dues, but a man of God came along and began teaching from the word of God. That's why he tells us, let's get back to the basics. Let's get back to the basics. We gotta go back to the word. The word is the basic. It's our foundation and it's what we should stand on and what's what we should live by. So we continue to give God the praise and all the glory and all the honor for what he is doing. We thank God for a man of God. Let us all stand up. Let us all stand up. I know this was a little while, but 119 years. We can't do that in two minutes. We can't do that in two minutes. But we thank God. We give God praise. We thank God for a leader, a man of God, our first lady, all those who are serving in this ministry at St. John Missionary Baptist Church Soul Saving Center. To God be the glory. Thank you, God. To God be the glory. Surely we should be shouting and thanking and praising God that we've been here that long and we should thank God that this house is paid for. Amen. Can't too many people say that now that we're looking at a building, but we look at what God has done for his people when you are faithful. And as a strong leader, God will do that. I'm gonna, it is 119. Okay. Uh, I'm going to cut this kind of short, but we normally do memorial services. If you have anybody that's a member that was, that was a member of this church and has gone on to be with the Lord, we ask you to stand at this time. If you have any family member that was a member of St. John has gone on to be with the Lord. In Psalms 116 and verse 15 says, Precious in the sight of the Lord that, that is the death of his saints. So we want you to know, and me and Pastor like ready to go light this candle. Can you turn this mic on for me, please? As we get ready to go to light the candle, thank you. We're gonna ask that you come. You can call out their names if you like while we like light the candles, if you want to. Of your loved ones. If you want to call their names out. 
Is it going to be the Lord? You are free to do it. You got to sit down so they can hear you. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. If that's the end, we ask that you stand here for a few minutes to pray silently or to think about your Lord when it's silent. It'll take a few minutes. Thank God they go on the view of the Lord. them, but they're with the Lord. He said, precious in the sight of the ones of his sake that are going to be with him. That's what Pastor I said, we all have to die. But when you leave a legacy behind for your love to continue on, that is precious to God. So we need to rejoice and know that they're with the Lord where we got to go one day, okay? And we're going to pray that God continue to bless you and keep you. We miss them. But we're going to see them one day. Definitely. Think about that. To be with the Lord. Because we ask for the body to be present with the Lord. And we all will leave here one day. But your love will never legacy back here. Do you and be here today. And we want to thank the older ones for doing that. Let's bow our heads. Most holy and all wise and eternal God. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this hour. We thank you for the memorial service of the little ones. Yeah. that are to be with you, Father God. In the name of Jesus. Father God, we ask you, oh God, to continue to strengthen the families. We know they miss it, Father God, but you can feel the Lord. Father God, because they are with you, rest in you, Lord. Yeah, yeah. You said legacy, and they have left behind. Yeah. They are the ones that, that built the foundation for us. Oh God, the older ones that prayed back there yeah. when hard times and things were difficult, they prayed to God for us. Yeah. That's why we're here today. Yeah. Are the prayers of the saints. Yeah. We yeah. want to tell you thank you, God, for the thing that they have done. For this church to be able to stand this long, it took the older saints yeah. of God that lived the holy life to continue to keep it in their family, instill it in their children yeah. and their grandchildren. And they went on. It came for each generation up to this present time. We want to tell you, thank you, Father God, for that all today. For nobody but you, God, that are keeping us, oh God. And we think about our loved ones, oh God. You are coming to give us good memories, oh God. You let us know that you're with us. You let us know one day we got to do the same thing. But Father God, we're going to still give you the glory. We're going to still give you the honor. Because you said this is not our home. We just pass it through, Father. We ask you, oh God, to bless them, to keep them, God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for St. John standing, oh God. We ask you, oh God, to continue to operate according to your word, oh God. You said to accept the Lord, build the house. And you built this house today, Father God. We want to tell you, thank you for 119 years that we've been standing, God, according to your words. Father, we give you all the honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Let's give God a hand, and pray for the chief one that has gone with the Lord. We should be rejoicing to know that they know that we got to go with them. For you will die. But it's where you're going when you leave here. Thank you. Come on, let's give God. Thank God for the ceremony on the day. Truly, it's been good. Thank God, sister, brother, for us up to marvelous job. Let's thank God for the Thank you, brother. I don't think you missed nothing. We tell you a good job. Good job. And we thank God for that today, too. Let's continue. Keep those families in prayer. Amen. But we made it this far by the grace of God. Amen. And truly, brother, was reading and just brought tears to my eyes. I mean, I just went back and she was going back reading the thing by the thing that we went through. Yeah. It was a good sale. I mean, you know, there's a few little problems, but we worked them out. And, and here it is. Amen. And everything so far that God has shown me, everything so far have already passed. Amen. And I thank God for that on today. Amen. Everything is paid for. 
God is just really blessing. I thank you. Amen. Um, I'm ready to go now because I'm full. But I'll just think about the old song. May the work I've done. Sometimes it seems like it's so small. Sometimes it seems like nothing at all. But we're going to keep that old work until God says, Well done. Being a pastor is not easy, amen. Trust me, it's not an easy job. We have people pulling different directions. You'd be surprised, man, if you have to fight through. Amen. Amen. But God give us strength to go through. And St. John, I thank you. I never could have made it this far without God and without your help. I appreciate all that y'all have done and all that you are doing. Amen. Thank you, choir, for being with us. Let us come back on next Sunday. See what the Lord has to say. Let us come back on Wednesday night. If there's anything else, we I'll make a quick announcement. Uh, the budget meeting. Uh, it's on Tuesday night at 7 o'clock budget meeting. Saturday, October the 7th at 2 p.m. The gala will, uh, will be at the Yankee Hall in Greenville at 2 o'clock. The gala at the, for the moderate anniversary, the gala will be at the Yankee Hall in Greenville uh, Saturday at 7 o'clock. Tickets are $50. Each church is asked to give $300 towards the moderate anniversary. Each church the annual weekly service for the association will start October the 9th through the 13th at 7 o'clock p.m. October the 14th, the annual business meeting will be at 10 o'clock. October the 15th, uh, Sunday, Sunday service will start at 10 o'clock a.m. Moderated annual anniversary um, message. Uh, we will not have services here on Thursday, Sunday, which will be October the 15th. All of them will be at the Royal uh, Tabernacle in Gold Point on that Day. And they ask all ministers to wear their robes. And the General Baptist State Convention will be Monday, October the 23rd, uh, Wednesday, uh, through October the 23rd, and the 25th in Shelby, North Carolina. One more not that, um, not so I'd like to make. There was a card dropped off, and they asked me to read it, and I'm going to do it quickly. It's to Pastor Black to bless you. As you celebrate another year of services, the Lord uh, and his people. Your ministry is a blessing to many, especially in the time when so many are need, encouragement, and hope. God is using you to shine for him in a wonderful way. It also reads that may God continue to bless you and keep you. Thank you for thanking God for you and praying for his continued blessing that you serve his name. Cedric and Kathy Robertson. Heavy is the family that they sent you. Pastor Black, thank you for the time. Okay? We're getting ready to go. But I always like to give you something to think about before you leave on today to make everybody day happy. I thank God for his surgery. For Pastor Black Open Heart Surgery. God brought him out wonderful excellence, you know, through, through all the time. But when he got ready to come home on that day when the doctor released him, we had to go pick up some medication at Walmart at my favorite store. So I wasn't thinking. I left the motor running in the van because he could get in and out of it so easily. And I didn't think to lock the door. And he didn't think to lock the door. We left the air conditioner running while he was sitting there. And when I came back, he said, look to the woman trying to carry me away from here. I said, what? He said, she got hopped in the van. So I said, man, you got the wrong van. You got the wrong van. The woman was about to take off with my hood. Said, the woman was about to whoop and hop out there. Y'all have a blessed day. Know that I love you. I'm glad I'm going to get one of my other ready, because I would jump that van if I had every law in the country trying to find it. Y'all have a blessed day. Your God for the service, oh God. God, we ask you to bless each and every one. They go to their very home in Jesus' name. We pray. Church, amen. amen. amen.